Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to go through all of the parts of a strong acid, strong base titration curve and calculate the pH along the way. We'll see where that kind of S shape of the titration curve comes from in the context of pH calculations. So here's the setup of the problem. I've got 25 milliliters of 0.1 molar HCl and I'm titrating that with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. So before I can plot out all of my points here, I wanna figure out where the equivalence point is for my titration. And this is actually the main calculation that you do whenever you do a real titration in the lab to figure out an unknown molarity. We're doing this to find an unknown volume in this case. But the principle here is that the moles of acid that you start with is equal to the moles of base that you have added once you reach the equivalence point. In other words, all of the moles of the acid are neutralized by all of the moles of the base, and you hit that equivalence point. That equation is molarity times volume of the acid equals molarity times volume of the base. And remember, molarity times volume will give you moles. In other words, moles of acid equals moles of base. And in this case, I'm solving for volume of the base to figure out where that is on my graph here. So I'll rearrange that equation to solve for volume of base, divide by molarity of base on both sides. I can rearrange it like this. And then I'm just gonna sub in the values that I know. Molarity of my acid is 0.1 molar. Volume of my acid is 25 liters. The molarity of the base is 0.1 molar. I don't need to convert to liters or anything because molarity cancels out with molarity. I'm left with milliliters. And I get volume of base equals 25 milliliters. It worked out towards the same volume of base as it was of acid just because my molarities are equivalent. Wouldn't always work out that way, but it does in this case. So I know here at 25 milliliters of base added is my equivalence point volume. That's where I'm gonna get that kind of vertical section of the titration curve. Okay, great, now I'm gonna do my first pH calculation, and I'm gonna find the pH at the very beginning, before I've added any base at all. So in this case, all we have is our HCl present. We haven't added the NaOH yet. And since hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, I know that all of the HCl dissociates into H plus and Cl minus, so my H plus concentration is equal to my HCl concentration that I'm given in the problem, or that I have in the uh, solution that I'm using. In that case, it's equal to 0.1 molar, so that's my H plus concentration. And then to find pH, I take negative log of that 0.1 molar, and I get 1.000. So that's gonna be my pH at the very beginning, right there. And so that was easy with the strong acid, I just take negative log of the strong acid molarity. All right, now let's find the pH after we've added some base. Let's say five milliliters that we've added to find another data point on our graph. The problem here is the base that I add is neutralizing some of the acid, but not all of the acid. So I need to find a way to figure out how much of the acid do I have left, and then to calculate the pH from that. So here's how I set that up. I'm gonna start by rewriting out the equation, but I'm gonna get rid of the spectators and stuff that I don't need. Sodium's a spectator, chloride's a spectator. So really what we have is hydroxide, my base, reacting with H plus, hydrogen ions, my acid, producing water. So that's all I need in my equation here. And I'm gonna create what we call a before, add, after table. The before is gonna be what do we start with, the add is gonna be the base that we added, and then after we'll analyze, okay, what do we have left in solution after the neutralization has occurred. It's really a stoichiometry calculation, so we need to convert everything into moles. It's different than an ice table where we're working in molarity, we need to be in moles for this. So what do I have before? Well, I've got approximately zero hydroxide ions. Technically there's some, but it's a really, really small amount. What about H plus? Well, to find number of moles, I take molarity times volume. My molarity of the HCl is 0.1 times my volume in liters is 0 0.025. 0 0.1 times 0 0.025 is 0 0.0025. That's the number of moles of H plus that I start with. Now I've added five milliliters of base. Go through the same calculation. Um, my base molarity is 0.1 molar times 5 milliliters, or 0 0.005 liters, is going to give me 0 0.0005 moles. It's important you get the decimals correct in this. Um, those can be a little bit tricky because we're working in such small numbers. So at this point, I started with 0 0.0025 moles of acid. I've just added 0 0.0005 moles of base. Those moles of base that I added will neutralize H plus, and I can figure out, well, how much do I have left? Well, all of the hydroxide here gets consumed, but the acid, I'm gonna have 0 0.0020 of it left. That 0 0.0005 got neutralized by this base here, and so I've got that many moles of H plus left. Now I've gotta take that piece of information and calculate the H plus concentration, because remember, pH is negative log of the concentration, not negative log of the number of moles of H plus. So I've gotta divide this by the total volume. So my H plus concentration equals 0 0.002 moles, I got that from here, divided by the volume. Now, 
I started with 25 milliliters of the acid, but I added five milliliters of the base, so I've got 30 milliliters now in my solution. I would take 30 milliliters, convert to 0 0.03 liters, and that's what I'm dividing by. When I divide that out, I get 0 0.06 repeating molar, that's my hydrogen concentration, and then I'm just gonna take negative log of that value, and that's gonna give me a pH of 1.18. My starting pH was one, I added five milliliters of base and I'm at 1.18. The pH barely moved, it moved up 0.18. So I can graph that on my graph here at five milliliters, 1.18. The pH hasn't changed very much at this point. Until we get to the equivalence point, the pH changes are gonna be very small. All right, let's add a little bit more base. In this case, let's say that we add 20 milliliters of base. So we should be approaching the equivalence point. We're pretty close. The equivalence point, remember, was at 25 uh, milliliters, and now we're at 20 milliliters. Let's see what the pH is gonna be. We're still before the equivalence point, so this is gonna be basically the same calculation again, just with 20 milliliters. So I'll set it up the same. I've got my reaction taking place there. I set up my before add after table. My initial, or before, is still the same as it was. I'm thinking before as in like before I've added anything at all. About zero hydroxide, 0 0.0025 moles of H plus. But at this point, I've added 20 milliliters of hydroxide. So that's gonna be 0 0.0020 moles. And remember, I got that by multiplying 20 milliliters times 0.1 molar, or 0 0.02 liters times 0.1 molar, and I get 0 0.002. At this point, if I do my little subtraction here, 0 0.0025 minus this, that's the neutralizing it, I should get 0 0.0005 moles of H plus left over. All of the hydroxide got consumed because I'm before the equivalence point. This is my moles of H plus. I'll do the same calculations before. My H plus concentration, 0 0.0005 moles, divided by, this case, I've got 25 milliliters I started with. I added 20 milliliters, so I'm at 45 milliliters. So convert that to liters, 0 0.045 liters, and I get 0 0.01 repeating molar, negative log of that to find the pH, and I get a pH of 1.95. Still hasn't moved a ton, it's only moved from one to two. So I can graph that on my graph at 20 milliliters. It's just under two, so I've got a dot right there. All right, any point before the equivalence point, we would calculate it the same way. Um, I'm not gonna calculate those in between points. We can kind of see the pattern that's going on here. Let's now look at the equivalence point. What's happening once we reach that 25 milliliters? Now, in the case of a strong acid, strong base titration, the pH at the equivalence point is always gonna be seven. It's the pH of pure water. This is assuming we're at 25 degrees Celsius at room temperature. The pH is gonna be seven, or very, very close to seven if we're at a different temperature. Now, why is that? Real quick, I'm gonna show you why that is. If I wanted to kind of work it out, there's, here's how I would do it. Um, I've got my reaction there. I set up a before add after table, and this is what it would look like. I'm starting with 0 0.0025 moles. I've added an equivalent number of moles of the base, so 0 0.0025. What do I have left? Well, all of this gets neutralized. So I have approximately zero and approximately zero moles of H plus and, and hydroxide. But really I don't have zero. It, in pure water, or in this case it, it'll be salt water, it, in water I've got 10 to the negative seventh molar of H plus and hydroxide, right? Auto ionization of water gives me 10 to the negative seventh. So I don't have zero moles of H plus. I really have however many moles it would be so that I had 10 to the negative seventh molar of H plus. If I take that value and solve for the pH, pH equals negative log of 10 to the negative seventh, well, that's a pH of seven. So really, when you reach the equivalence point in a strong acid, strong base titration, you've got neutral water left over, essentially, and that has a pH of seven. That won't be the case for a weak acid, strong base titration. That would require a whole nother calculation and another video. All right, so let's graph that on our graph. We've got the point right there at 25 milliliters. We've got a pH of seven. Now let's take a look. What about after the equivalence point? So let's keep going. We added 25. Let's say we've added a total of 30 milliliters of the base. What's going on with the pH there? So we'll set it up the same way that we've been setting it up. We're gonna write our equation out like this. We'll do our before add after table. This time we'll see though that we've got a, not H plus left over, we've got hydroxide left over. So let's see what it looks like. We've got zero and then 0 0.0025 moles of H plus, just like we've had in the other ones. At this point, we've added 30 milliliters of the base. So 30 milliliters, which is 0.03 liters times 0.1, gives us 0 0.0030 moles. This time when I neutralize these, 
it actually neutralizes all of the H plus and I've got 0 0.0005 moles of hydroxide left over. Well, I can't calculate pH directly from this, but I can calculate pH by doing a couple steps. So I've got my moles of hydroxide. Let's calculate my hydroxide concentration, same way we did before with the H plus concentration. I'm gonna take the number of moles, which is 0 0.0005 moles, divided by the total volume. I started with 25 milliliters, I added 30, that's gonna be 55 milliliters. Divide those out, and I get 0 0.00, and then the nine zero is repeating here over and over again. That's my molarity of the hydroxide. And I'll take negative log of that to find my pOH. That gives me a pOH of 2.04. And then of course for pH, I take 14 minus that to get a pH of 11.96. So almost 12 is my pH at 30 milliliters. Let's graph that point on our graph there. And it still rose quite a bit. Now, I wanna get one more data point just for the graph. I went ahead for sake of time of the video, I worked this off screen and at 40 milliliters, we have a pH of just under 13. And you see on our graph, that kind of S-shaped curve that we get with titrations. And I can draw my line there to show that titration curve. Okay, cool. Let's summarize all of these calculations that we did for the strong acid, strong base titration. Of course, we use molarity times volume equals molarity times volume to find what the equivalence point is. That's the most common titration calculation that you have to make. But then for all the pH calculations, for the initial pH, what did we do? Well, we know that it's a strong acid, so it fully dissociates. So whatever the molarity of the acid is, that's the molarity of H+, and we just convert that to pH. Simple as that. What about after we add some base, but we're before the equivalence point? Well, in each of those cases, remember we wrote out the reaction, we did a before add after table. We use that to figure out the moles of H plus. For the moles of H plus, we divided by the volume and that gave us the H plus concentration. And then we just converted that to pH. Okay, what about at the equivalence point? This is the easiest one at the equivalence point our pH is seven. And again, that's only for strong acid, strong base, not for a weak acid titration. And then what about after the equivalence point? Well, after the equivalence point, set it up the same way, write your reaction out before add after table. From there though, you're gonna get the hydroxide concentration, or really number of moles of hydroxide, divide by volume, gives you hydroxide concentration. Then we can convert from that to the pOH, and then that to the pH. One more thing I wanna point out, What's the main thing that we have present at each point along this titration curve? Well, at this very beginning, we primarily have H plus ions. As we add base, we still primarily have H plus ions. It's not until right here that we've neutralized all of those and we have almost no H plus or OH minus. In fact, it's the same amount of H plus and OH minus as pure water has. And then as soon as we cross that equivalence point, what's the main thing that we have in solution? Hydroxide. The equivalence point there is where that hydroxide and H plus concentration are equal. Before it, we've got mostly H plus. After it, we've got mostly OH minus. So that's how you calculate pH at all of the points along a strong acid, strong base titration curve. The weak acid titration curve is very different. So check out my video on that when you're ready for it. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Don't you just love pH calculations? So fun. I mean, it's not as fun as being in the lab and doing an actual titration, but it's a, you know, it's a close second.